Hi, I'm Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. But that's not why I'm here today. I'm here to talk about saving money, this time using a home haircut kit. Now, as you can see, my hair is pretty tightly cropped, and I actually use an item called the Remington Shortcut. Now, that's something I talked about in a different video, and it's a great little gadget, but it's not terribly versatile. It's really kind of a one-trick pony giving you these kinds of haircuts. Well, when my son saw me cutting my own hair, he wanted me to cut his hair, but he didn't want it quite this short. He wanted a little bit more of a crew cut kind of a cut. And for that, you need a different type of device. In fact, a much more versatile device that I'm sure all of you recognize, that's one of these gadgets here. This is your traditional hair clipper. Now, you may ask yourself, well, you know, is this something I really want to do? And I guess that's only a question that you can answer yourself to. But it's really very simple. I don't have any particular talent when it, cuts, uh, when it comes to cutting hair, but if I did, I could see expanding my range to do uh, other haircuts. But for the simple buzz cut, or the crew cut, or the traditional boys cut, using one of those clippers is very, very easy. So let's talk about what you need and how you go about doing it. The first thing that you're going to need is a clipper, and I would recommend a clipper kit. A lot of different manufacturers make kits that contain just about everything that you need, including the clipper, these types of attachments that will let you kind of automatically adjust the depth of hair that you're cutting, combs, capes, brushes, everything you can imagine. The one thing that I would caution here is don't get too crazy when it talks about how many pieces are in a kit because a lot of those extra pieces are unnecessary and are very inexpensive and you probably already have them around the house. So if you're looking at a kit that has 20 pieces versus 24 pieces, the 24 piece one might cost you more but it may not have all the sorts of things that you really need or that you couldn't just supply from your bathroom drawer. Uh, things like uh, hair clips and combs and capes that are really nothing more than a fancy garbage bag are probably wastes of money. I did a little internet research before I did this talk and I saw that the Wall brand or the WAHL brand tends to get better ratings than the other consumer grade brands out there. So that may be a brand that you want to look for. Okay, here you can see the basic things that you need to cut hair. Here's a clipper, and it's just a standard clipper. Now, I'm actually using a low-end professional clipper, uh, which will cut much better than the, uh, the cheap consumer uh, ones. I'm also showing here some attachments. And people say the more attachments, the better. I'd say you probably need four or five different attachments at different lengths to do the job for most men's and boy haircuts. We also have the very important oil and little brush. Now, a lot of these blades are made of carbon steel. Sometimes you'll get one that's made of titanium or stainless steel, but if, if you get a, a cutter that includes oil, you definitely want to use it, and I'll show you how later in this video. You also have a comb, but here any comb could, could do. It doesn't have to be a barber's comb or one that comes with a kit. And you do need a pair of barber-type scissors. If your kit doesn't come with one of those types of scissors, you can certainly use uh, some scissors that you could buy at any drugstore or any Walmart or Kmart or Target. But they have to be barber-type scissors, and they should only be used for hair. Once you use these types of scissors on things like paper, they lose their effective sharpness, and they're no longer good for cutting hair. And of course, the reason that you need those scissors is just for that little cleanup at the end. If you have a few errant hairs sticking up, or you want to clip a little something that's sticking up around the ear, the scissors come in very, very handy um, and, and really kind of give you that professional look. Here we have some accessories that make hair cutting a little more enjoyable but aren't totally necessary. We have what's called a T trimmer. This is a fine detail trimmer to cut the sideburns around the neck, around the ears, that sort of thing. You certainly can invert your regular hair clipper to do this, but this is a little lighter and smaller and gives you a little more ability. I also have a neck brush, and this is the classic neck brush that a barber would use. This is totally unnecessary. You could use something like a washcloth with a little bit of talc or baby powder on it. That would work just fine, too, but I kind of like this, so that's why I have it. And here's some talc, very inexpensive. You can often buy this at any drugstore. It has that barbery kind of smell, and it's also kind of fun to use. And lastly, a professional cape. If you don't want to buy the cape, 
You can get a shampoo cake at a, a cape at a beauty supply shop. Uh, those are just very expensive, probably under ten dollars. Or you can also use an old small tablecloth or perhaps a, an old towel and just use a safety pin. That's going to work just fine too. So these are extras that are not necessary, but if you really get into the hair cutting thing, they're kind of fun to have around. So when you're actually cutting the hair, what you're doing is you're going to put on an attachment. Here's a nice big attachment, so it's going to cut very long, obviously much too long for my hair, and it just snaps on like that. Okay, I'll put a smaller one on here to show you that that one's smaller. So it very easily goes on like this and just snaps on like that. And you go against the hair grain, which means you feel which way it's, you have the resistance, and that's the way you go. When you reach the top of your cut, you turn it out like this. You're kind of doing it in a rocking motion, and that's going to give you a smoother edge between various cut lengths. On the top, I'm going to use a longer length, so this is going to be a quarter inch all the way around. On the top, I'm going to use a, a half inch, the same sort of a thing, kind of rocking in at the end. And I might have to go over the same spot a couple of times to make sure it's smooth. The one tricky area is typically the wheel or the back of the head, and that's because the hair goes in many directions. So you have to kind of feel around, usually it kind of goes around like this, and you have to go around, again, against the hair grain to get it to cut evenly. But I can tell you that it's a very simple process, and really, it takes just a few minutes to cut my son's hair, and it looks pretty good. Now, I like using the tea trimmer, especially for a kid, because their heads are smaller, but you can certainly take a regular clipper like this, and instead of doing it like this, invert it like that, and that's going to trim around too. I just find this a little bit awkward. Now, what about the difference between a consumer level product and a professional product? Well, it's very simple. This is, again, an entry-level professional product. What you're going to find is the components are better quality, so they're going to last longer. Things like switches and all that are made of better quality. The motor's usually going to be bigger and more powerful, so it's going to plow through that hair better. And the blades are going to be higher quality, too. So that means less passes to get a good haircut. The cheaper ones will definitely cut, but you might have to go over the same spot a couple of times. If you have a trimmer that's pulling hair or... Um, just hurting the person where you're cutting their hair, then something's wrong. And look at your instructions about how to adjust the blades here. It's usually fairly simple. If you get a really, really cheap brand, it might just be junk, and you might have to just throw that out and get a better brand. And that's why I'm really recommending going with the wall. But if I look at people that use the professional wall, like this, versus the consumer level walls, definitely the professional ones are better. So why am I saying not to buy this right away? Because to buy the professional brand, it's going to cost you at least twice as much. These sell for around $50. The brand names sell for about, or the big brands sell for about $100 or even $200. That's a lot of money if you're not sure if you're going to use it. So here we have William with his before. Here you see a couple of cuts and trimming. And this is the after product, oh, only after a few minutes of cutting. And he's happy. We didn't have to go out anywhere. We didn't have to wait in line. We didn't have to pay for a haircut. We didn't have to pay a tip. He's ready to go and play now, and I'm ready to relax. I almost forgot. I wanted to show you how to apply the oil. As you can see in this picture, I'm just putting a drop or two of oil on the blades. I'll then run the blades for about a second and I'll wipe off the excess. The key here is to use the oil that's supplied. You don't want to use other types of oil like vegetable oil or hair uh, tonic type oil because that's going to gunk the blades. And believe it or not, this little tiny bottle will last you a very, very long time because really you're only using about a drop or two. But definitely try to oil it after each use and clean out that hair and you'll get the longest life possible from your hair trimmer.